Mini episode 1692 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello and welcome to the FDH Lounge review of the year in sports. This is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our top five sports stories of 2023. Number five, Brady retires. Belichick essentially retires while still on the job and the league they left behind struggles to replace them. An injury wave wiped out a good chunk of the star power in the league. New questions were raised about previous Golden Boys Josh Allen, Sean McDermott, and others, while the QB depth in the league has apparently plummeted to a modern low. Even the best teams are just less mid than those behind them. Nevertheless, the league is having another banner season business-wise and is preparing to welcome in a marquee quarterback class so this bump in the road may not even be felt beyond this year. Number four, the year of the gimmick. With the new pitch clock, expanded bases, limited pickoff rules, and shift regulation rules in MLB, an expanded international slate in the NFL and NBA, and the in-season tournament in the NBA, leagues are going far beyond alternate uniforms in their endless quest for monetizing interest by introducing different dynamics. MLB did get far more watchable, although FDH Lounge dignitary Steve Callis correctly notes that the games could have been shortened by simply foregoing one 30-second ad between half innings, and the curse of the uppercut swing being prioritized continues to contribute to the plague of three true outcomes. The NBA's tournament, to Steve's old-school dismay, was a big hit. It's truer than ever that when it comes to money, Nothing is sacred, and any traditions are disposable. Number three, Wemby Mania's running wild. The highest profile rookie in the NBA in the 20 years since LeBron James has not disappointed, as Victor Wembanyama delivers a blend of skills that we've never seen before. He has all of the defensive capabilities that you would expect out of a mobile 7-4 frame, while being able to score from all over the floor. Yes, all over the floor. He's the most complete player in the history of the game, fittingly taking that designation from LeBron. He's got to stay healthy, which will be a challenge on that presently slim frame, but he's in the right place as Coach Pop and San Antonio served as the best possible developmental ground for both David Robinson and Tim Duncan. As incredible as it seems, the third big man in this procession is poised to surpass the accomplishments of both predecessors. Number two, the RSN model fades into the sunset as the streaming model becomes ascendant. Ten to fifteen years ago, the regional sports networks looked like they would be the sports powerhouses of the future, as the model that really took off in the early 2000s seemed to have staying power. Once the cable bundle inevitably splintered and sports became a la carte like everything else, of course, that might change, but then and only then, right? Wrong. The pandemic surely had a lot to do with this phenomenon, but cable and satellite subscriptions have been fading for years as consumers took matters into their own hands, creating a la carte bundles with various streaming entities. The fact that few, if any, of them contained sports packages surprisingly didn't stop the wave of cord cutting. Keep in mind that, as always, we're not counting those who switch to streaming cable as cord cutters. Those people are wannabes if they describe themselves as such. No, the real cord cutters are impacting RSN finances in a dire way, imperiling their ability to pay major sports teams the money that they're owed. Legal disputes continue to disrupt MLB the NBA, and the NHL while this all plays out. Meanwhile, streaming continues its strong momentum as Max just acquired many major Turner sports packages. 
The NFL forges into year two on Amazon Prime with numbers supposedly close to what they were previously, and Peacock acquiring exclusive Big Ten football games, an exclusive NFL regular season game, and even an exclusive NFL wildcard playoff game. Wait for the whining when everyone realizes that in January. RSNs and streaming services are ships passing in the night, and 2024 will only bring an acceleration of this trend. Number one, it's been December 31st for much of the year in college football. It's the year before the sport changes more in one year than it has in decades. Think of what that entails when you consider the way that NIL and the transfer portal have already transformed the game in the 2020s. Thanks to the coup de grace events over the summer, the Pac-12 becomes the Pac-2 next year, as the Big Ten, Big 12, and even the ACC fill themselves on their remains. Stanford and the Atlantic Coast Conference, how fitting. And the 12-team playoff arrives as the titans of the sport hope that the March Madness-esque drama of December and January will make up for the complete defilement of the regular season. The SEC moves completely to ABC and ESPN, leaving behind its iconic theme music for CBS to use at 3.30 for the Big Ten. Gee, that won't be too weird. A TV deal for the playoff will also be negotiated, as ESPN will eventually have to share the expanded bracket with other networks, as long as they're still interested. Yeah, right. Call it bigger is better. Call it the professionalization of college sports. Call it what you want. But the road that we started down all the way back in the early 90s, when visionary SEC commissioner and previous lounge guest Harvey Schiller started this wave of conference consolidation, has led to its inevitable destination point. 2023 in college football has been about saying goodbye and looking ahead to a degree that few sports have ever seen. In 2024, our future awaits. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.